Welcome back to the Outdoor Podcast. For those of you who haven't been following my journey, I'm Alex, and for the past two years, I've been on my own self-improvement journey. Along that journey, I happen to found a pretty lovely lady that's sitting right beside me. In today's video, me and my girlfriend, Leslie, want to go over the keys to having successful teenage relationships at our young age. Hopefully try and help guys and girls out there who are going through the same problems that we went through before meeting one another. Hi, I'm Leslie, and I have been working on my relationships for as long as I can remember. On my journey, I have found a lot of advice that I've experienced firsthand that you don't see on social media, you don't see on TikTok, you don't see portrayed everywhere. And this is advice that I find to be extremely valuable, especially in healthy relationships, and especially as teenagers or in high school. Yeah. And this is something that I want to share with you, and I hope that it helps you. Yeah, to try and help as many of you guys really just figure out the whole relationship game and figure out who is for you, who is not for you, and figure out how to move on from the people who aren't for you to eventually come by those amazing people that are for you. So... How should we start this? Let's see. Um, the first thing, I guess, that I want to talk about on this podcast, which is, by the way, my first podcast as well. So we're talking about so much mumbo jumbo. It really doesn't matter. It was just a podcast. The first thing I want to ask you about, because I think this is really valuable to the guys and to the girls, because they, they see different kinds of perspectives. Um, what do you think about the current dating game in high school these stuff you see like um hot, hot girl summer hot, hot boy summer i think it's called we don't know anything about that hot boy summer hot girl summer yeah i actually was talking to someone from someone i know and they were like oh i'm actually building a roster like, like what, what is what do you think about like just the casual dating game that is in high school and what do you think is wrong with it in terms of like trying to find happiness in life, trying to be happy with a partner, like that kind of stuff? I think the whole thing about dating in high school is that you're not looking for someone to build a life with, rather you're just looking for someone to fill a void. You know, rather, yeah. you're not looking for people that are valuable, that will add meaning to your life, that will make you happy, that will, yeah create a good life for you you just you sort of see the people around you you see your friends you see these older girls or you see these other people and you're like oh like i want to live like them and yeah. one of the ways that they're living is that they have all these guys around them where they yeah. have all these girls around them and you think that the only way to build status is by being surrounded by guys or is, is that for girls too girls think like they build status by like trying to be surrounded by guys maybe not build status but like you're cool, you know? Like you, you feel accepted kind of thing. Yeah, like when you... Yeah. Like when, you know, like when there's... When people know that, oh, like you're associated with this hot guy. They're like, oh, like she's cool. Yeah, you yeah, You know, like yeah, that yeah, sort yeah. of idea. Yeah. Um, um, that's actually kind of surprising. And, and I, I didn't think I was going to bring religion into this as quickly as I am. But the thing you said, thirst, mm -hmm. right? You said... It's you're trying to fill a void. Mm -hmm. um, somewhere in the Bible, I, I saw this online, so don't don't um, I, I don't know the exact place it's at, but somewhere in the Bible it says, um, like Jesus was at a well, and there was this woman from the she wasn't a Jew, she was some sort of other other woman from a different nation, and uh, he told her, if you keep drinking from the water of the well, you will continue to thirst. If you if you drink once from the water, I will give you. You will never thirst again in your life. And that, this is a problem. Um, what Jesus means is if you focus on God, you will never be thirsty for the worldly things of this world, like uh, sex, like money, like the, all of these things, you can have them and you can be extremely successful. You can have sex with a partner all the time, but it's not something you're thirsting for. It's not something you're desperate for. You're, you're actually just focused on the Lord the whole time. Whereas... Um, I guess, like, the way that the media is really shaping, like, life for younger kids, and, and this is whole, a whole government ploy that we don't really have to get into, like, in this video, but I feel like we're very sinful as a generation, as an age of people, 
our, us young people are very sinful in the current day and age, and we're very promiscuous. All of us guys, even me before I met her, I was like on this promiscuous wave of like, like just trying, like I, I, I kept thirsting for like, for, for trying to have sex and stuff like that. And it just, it's not good. It's not right. It doesn't, it will never fulfill you. So if, if that's a, a similar stage to where you're at right now in your life, try to avoid that and be patient because the right person will come by you. Another thing I'm kind of surprised about is like how um, a lot of girls, and you weigh in on this as well, a lot of girls will be like, oh, I'm building a roster, oh, I'm doing that. Like, like they, they try and like, they Snapchat like 10, 15, 20, most cases like 40 or 50 different guys, but let's be, you know, 10, 15 different guys, they Snapchat and like they flirt with and stuff. Realistically speaking, like these girls, like deep down, they want one guy. They don't, they may not know him, but they want one man to like be with them and to love forever, right? That's true. Well, that's the thing is that they go around, at least from what I know and from my, like not experience, but from my experience. Yeah, from what you've seen. From what I've seen is they'll Snapchat a lot of guys, but they're always either like hung on one guy or they only, they want like different values and different traits. Really? That's so weird. It's like, at the end of the day, they're just looking for that one guy. Like, they want that stability. But all, all, all of us guys think like, oh, girls are, girls are whores, girls do this, girls do this. Mm -hmm. In reality, like, it's not, like, the problem is it, it's way too okay for girls to have many partners. And then that's why they search for that. But they'll ne they're never satisfied. Like, you, you've never seen a girl who talks to three different guys, fully satisfied and happy in her life. And most of the girls you see like that are usually crying with their best friends on FaceTime, like pretty often mm -hmm. talking about like guys and talking about their, their relationship problems and stuff like that. What is some mainstream girl advice that people, the girls get like on social media that, you know, is passed around quite often. Like for guys, it's like um, be an alpha. For guys mm. like go to the gym, get as successful as you can. Um, make don't make a girl your first priority that's like kind of the the flow of advice for guys what is it for girls i think from what i've seen for girls in relationship advice a lot of it is so sort of that idea of building a roster and going out with as many guys as you can less building a long-term successful relationship more so what can you do in the short term yeah yeah it's you feel like it's never really focused on like like working a year towards that perfect relationship and then getting it after a year. It's like, what can you do in a week mm -hmm. kind of thing? Which is, I don't know, how do you feel about that? Which I don't like. Um, I mean, obviously, I feel like everyone thinks differently to a certain point, but I think that at the end of the day, sort of like when your lifelong goal is to build that life with one person, work towards like sort of focus on yourself, put your energy onto yourself. How can build you- Build your passions, build yeah. your progress, whatever. Build, exactly, like build up your life so that you can meet that person, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Become right. the person who is with that person. Yeah. And, and also she mentions like, um, she, you, you mentioned like your end goal in life is to build that life with a person. I feel like a lot of guys in this comment section are gonna think, um, you know, Oh, you know, you should never make a girl your top priority. Is kind of, that's not what she's saying. Realistically, if you were to reflect on your own values and on your own beliefs, you don't want to build a, the whole life, the successful life, the Lamborghinis, the Ferraris, the Porsches. You don't want to build that whole life, the mansions. You don't want to build that life and be alone. You're building that life so then you can be with somebody, right? You're building that life so you can enjoy it with somebody else, with your wife. Mm -hmm. If you're a guy, with your husband, if you're a girl, mm -hmm. right? That's what she's trying to say. She's not trying to say, focus your whole life around finding a partner and then cling on to them as hard as you can. That's not what she's saying. No, it's about building your own life so that when you do meet your partner, you're able to be a good partner, if that makes yeah. sense. Like being your own person and being a whole person so that when you meet your other half... You're able to be valuable. Exactly. Yeah, and you're, you're able, able to, to come value together. To their life. Yeah. Now, the mainstream dating advice for girls is build your roster... All men are trash, so you might as well just have fun. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. kind of thing. Which to a certain degree is true. You guys have no fucking manners. Regardless of that, no, I'm not shitting on them. It, no, it's no. real. Like, I've, I've heard, like, stories from girls. The girls have gone on dates, like, ten different guys, and only one of those guys has opened the door and paid for the bill. Like, it's it's crazy, like, how, how down we are as a, as a fucking population of guys. As guys, some of the advice that we hear is kind of, like, don't talk to your girlfriend that much. You know, like, be hard to reach. Make yourself desirable in whatever way you can. And I want to ask, should you be fully honest with your girlfriend? Should you leave everything on the table fully honest and open? And and give this from your perspective, because you know that's how I am with you. Yeah. There's things that you probably wish you don't know that you know. <laughs> so what do you think? What would you, first of all, what would, like... What do you think? But also, what do you? What would you say to those people who are living that kind of life, where they're trying to like subtly manipulate their girlfriend into like you know making themselves like harder to reach? You know, they don't give her as much attention, so she can keep like fiending for. Her. I think when you do that and you pull away from your girlfriend, what that does is that distances her. So. From your perspective, you're like, oh, I'm making her chase after me. I'm this great guy. But from her perspective, she doesn't feel valued. And she feels less than, and she begin, she starts to doubt herself. And eventually that is what causes her to leave. I think when you found that person or in, when you found your person leaving everything on the table. I've got a subject. Can you please remember what you're going to say? I have a really good question I have to ask you. Okay. How do you know that you found that person? That's a very good question. How do you know? For me, at least, it's just a feeling. Like, there's not, like, it's not like a checklist where you check everything off and you know that, oh, if I check everything off, like, you're my person. That's it. That's it. Like, that's all. (laughs) Like, you can have a checklist. There can be things that you want in your partner. But at the end of the day, you those can, are more subconscious. Yeah, like you can check everything off a checklist, but You're if you still don't, an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> if you don't feel comfortable with your partner, you can't build a life with them. If you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's still a dickhead, right? Yeah. <laughs> like if you can't be yourself around your partner, if you can't express who you are, if you can't be silly but be serious, if you can't, like if you find that there are limitations in who you are when you're around your partner chances are they're not the person for you right so going back to what i what i what you were talking about before mm-hmm. i interrupted you when you know it's that right person right you have to be open i think yes you be open you essentially you put your heart out onto the table and you say this is who i am mm-hmm. um, i think when you do that on one end you build trust with your partner it lets them know that oh, this person wants me and I want this person back. And when you open your heart, say to me, I'm able to open my heart to you. And we build that, like, trust. Um, Whereas if, say, you're closed off, that makes it very hard for me to be open as well. Yeah. And so it's that, like, sort of two-way communication. Yeah. Um, So there's two things that I have to say. One is about trust. The second I'm going to go into first because I might forget it. The second is this. As she said, how you guys, you distance her when you're being like you're trying to make her chase you or whatever. You think that because she's chasing you, she is actually like, you know, your relationship is going better. But that only comes from your inexperience. I, I say it comes from your inexperience because of this. You're not used to a girl chasing you whatsoever. You're used to girls making zero steps towards you. And now when she makes one step forward, you don't notice the two steps back that she's making from every one of your shitty actions. So that's a little bit of hard truth for anybody who's struggling with that. The second thing is trust is extremely important and it has benefits outside of just believing one another, okay? If you and your partner have trust, romantically, you'll be better. If you and your partner have trust, you'll be able to do more things together, you'll be able to have more fun together and your relationship is much more easygoing. You'll never argue as much because one person doesn't feel always disaffected by the other. 
you know, one person doesn't always feel like the other has something bad out for them. Um, most guys, mm -hmm. my age at least, think that girls want to cheat on them. I'm of the opinion that most girls don't want to cheat on you because I believe that girls, realistically speaking, in their truest nature, want to find one partner to spend the rest of their life with, Re regardless if whether they understand it in their mind or not, regardless if it's conscious or not, that's their goal. So, do you think most girls go into relationships ready to cheat on a guy? No. No. Absolutely not. Like most girls don't? I don't think so. From what I've seen, when a girl is talking to a guy, especially one guy that she's so happy, she's so content with, it's this like giddy, giddy feeling, you know? Um, like everything, maybe even in like a bad obsessive way, but everything <laughs> is like about this guy. Like, oh my gosh, like he texted me. Oh my gosh, like he said this. Like, it's so, it's such a happy feeling. And it's so like, oh, he's so cute. Like, I want to be with him. It's that feeling. It's not, there's never any like bad intentions. There's never anything like, oh, I'm going to get into a relationship just to do this. Like, there's just like a part time thing. Yeah. Like, there are like, I mean, I'm guessing there are times where there are, girls who do go into it with bad intentions but that's typically only when you've wronged her in some way and she's really i think so i feel like i've seen they're gonna hate on you in the comments probably but it's only when you've wronged her <laughs> no but i mean okay you know so... the doomers are gonna be so pissed right now <laughs> there's one specific instance where i'm thinking of where this girl was like with her boyfriend and he cheated on her and then they like got right. back together and she, that, <laughs> that, like that that's what i mean like right. that's the only situation where i mean where but, she might do that where she might do that but in every other instance when a girl gets to a relationship or when a girl is genuinely talking to and liking a guy it is like such a happy thing there's no bad intent there's no negative anything at all yeah. social media is kind of a big reason why people cheat if they're not cheating with their actual physical bodies mm -hmm. having relationships romantically with other people they're cheating through texting they're cheating through sending pictures through snapchatting other guys with the intent of flirting how common is that first but second mm -hmm. what do you think about having social media at all at our age mm -hmm. and two and like three and give this advice for girls because guys i feel like i could like to a certain degree, they've already been handled and I can handle it as well. But I guess give your advice for guys as well as to why, you know, you don't think that they should be having social media. But same with girls, because girls are much more, I feel like on social, like much, a much bigger percentage of them isn't like social media is bad for you. Cheating on or using social media and through social to media to cheat, I think... I actually don't know how common it is. Yeah. It's very easy to do. <laughs> like, it's crazy easy. But... <laughs> <laughs> it sounds really and, No, it's true. It's true. I understand what you're saying. And it, totally, by the way, but guys, totally, it is the most, like, stupidest way to cheat because it is most likely that you will get no reward from your efforts, but you will definitely get the punishment. Yeah. That's it's one of the worst <laughs> methods, by the way. If you guys are really interested... There's other methods. <laughs> but I would say because it is so easy, there are people who use it as a method to cheat, as a way to cheat. So I would say that it's probably decently common. Yeah? Yeah. Um, what regarding... do you think is, like, most common? Like, you think just sending messages? Like, for girls. What do you think girls do the most to cheat on social media? Ooh. Probably just Snapchat. What do they do? Kind of like the... <laughs> Just like snapping other guys, like maybe like being like, oh, like very casual about it. But why do they do that? Either they don't find fulfillment in their own relationship and they look for that fulfillment somewhere else, or they're just not very faithful people in general. And that's why. So, okay, first of all, why do you think they don't have enough fulfillment? Is it because, for example, what's more likely that their partner isn't fulfilling their needs mm -hmm. or that they. That they have an unsatiable amount of need 
because their addiction to social media, their addiction to easy dopamine that is so, uh, that is so, this is my note sheet, that is so common in the current day. I think it's a mixture of both, but I would say more, more commonly, it would be just them chasing after something else. Um, just always thinking about what's next, never thinking yeah. about what am I, what are they there now, like never being present. Yeah. Rather than sort of like their partner not fulfilling them, it's sort of they're not fulfilling themselves and they're not finding that fulfillment in their relationship because they're looking for, okay, well, okay, now, but well, what do I do next? You yeah. know, what's my next thing that I'm going to go after? Right. Regarding having social media at our age is one thing that kind of scares me because what I realized like pretty recently is that a lot of people our age use social media as their main form of communication you know rather than knowing people's numbers or sending texts it's through like Instagram or it's through snap or this and that and I think that when you're like an actual adult you can't like social media can't be your only form of communication, yeah. you know, and that's sort of what I think about it. Yeah. Um, I think at a certain age, you have to sort of step back from social media and just sort of take a step back from social media and be like, okay, like, what do I do now? Like, what do you do now in the sense of when you're on social media, it's a very leisure activity. You know, you're scrolling, you're looking at other people's lives. When you're 25, for example, like that's sort of when you go, okay, what, but what do I want to do with my life? Yeah. What am I and trying to achieve? When you've spent 16 to 25, not a day working towards your own life, you're mm -hmm. fucked at 25 because yeah. all those years, 16 to 25, you were looking at other people's lives. This is why I always say to people I know in real life, don't use social media, delete social media. No one believes me. Everyone looks like looks at me like I'm crazy. Everyone says, oh, social media is not that bad. You're looking at somebody else's life for nine years. Those nine years you could have spent, every single hour you spent on those apps, most of you it's five, six, seven, eight hours a day that you're spending on these apps. You could have spent that time every single day building your own life. And when you're 25, you're you're rich, you're helping your whole family. If, you, if you're not rich, you have some sort of freedom that most 25-year-olds could could only dream of having mm -hmm. very true and i know like i've heard stories of people who they're graduating so they're like 22 and they still use snapchat as their main form, form of communication and to me that's like that's sort of like on social media you're in your own world but when are you going to come back to the real world that sort of idea what do you think about social media in regards to like how it affects relationships though like a boyfriend and a girlfriend they both have talk instagram snapchat I think it negatively affects relationships. Um, there are things that I've seen where it's either like relationship advice <laughs> or um, videos regarding relationships. A lot of these videos, I think, cause doubts in people. And I think this is the one thing where when you start doubting yourself, when you start doubting your relationship, that's when a lot of things go downhill. When, yeah, when you both have that easy access to cheating on each other and the ability to cheat on each other, it's very, like, I would say it's a very common thing. Not that, oh, if you and your partner both have social media, you will cheat on each other. It's just, there's that certain level of, like, oh, like, that could happen. Like, opportunity. You have way yeah. more opportunity. Yeah. And another thing that a lot of you guys won't actually think about when you guys are scrolling on these apps is you guys are cheating on your partners without texting anybody, without looking at, uh, w without trying to like send pictures to one, like without trying to communicate with other people, you're still cheating on your partner. And you're cheating on your partner morally by watching a video talking about how girls are cheating on guys at a, a crazy amount. It's like, oh, everyone's getting cheated on. You're cheating on your partner because now a gram of your faithfulness has left the window and you can't give it to your partner. You've just cheated on them. You've just took in from them what you should never have taken from them. Okay? That's, that's another thing that just came to mind and I've never thought about it before, but mm -hmm. hearing you talk about it, Leslie, it's, it's incredible how, like how, how things can generate in your mind and, and it's true. 
the amount, like you're taking away from your partner valuable things that can be very, very beneficial to them and their lives and your trust together. And it sucks. That's what social media does. That's what it was designed to do. Yeah. It just creates an atmosphere where you don't think that you can trust your partner because there are videos that you see of too like... Too many examples. Too many examples. And there are things you see where it's like, oh, well, guess what? Your partner's out doing this right now. Yeah. And then you're in your mind, you're like, oh my gosh, well, that's my partner. Like, he's out doing that right now. Yeah. And that trust that you've worked so hard to build starts slowly to go down. And eventually, you just, you don't yeah. have it anymore. Exactly. I also think that social media is one of the worst things that you can do for a relationship. Even in just the beginning stages, something I covered in my last video um, how to keep your girlfriend or it might have been like it's it's one of the newer videos um, like it, it is so fucked up how in this generation you are meeting people in person instead of asking them for their phone number like a man like a gentleman you go can I have your Instagram and then as soon as you get their Instagram as soon as you're out of their site you go on their Instagram and you see what their pictures are like and you start to evaluate them based on their pictures based on whatever they have on there, right? This is extremely wrong. I don't believe that as partners, you should ever have each other's social media profiles and that you even should have social media profiles in the first place unless you love to share specific things, um, unless you want to actually make it into a business, unless you want to make it into a career, into something where like you're inspiring others, like how I am doing with my YouTube channel. Um, I don't believe that you need these things. I think living naturally is much more valuable. And just the, the fact that you can literally see like a girl's butt, a girl's boobs on social media and imagine her in bed with you. Like imagine like all these kinds of like dirty, nasty fantasies just by doing that is extremely disgusting because you take away the enjoyment that you could have if she gave that to you in real life she gave it to you you already know what she looks like you already imagine all of it it's not fresh like it's not something new it's not something exciting to you anymore we've talked a lot about social media about cheating can guys and girls be platonic friends <laughs> <laughs> and this is from a girl I, I i don't think i've asked her this before i think i asked this once when we met i think you gave me somewhat of a wrong answer but it was way better yeah it was way better than yeah, yeah i think so anyways what do you what's your answer what do you think can can guys and girls be friends i think when you're in a relationship it's hard to be friends with someone of the opposite sex because there are certain boundaries that you now have to set that maybe they're not willing to set or they're not able to set or it's hard for the both of you to set this is why i just like this why would if you guys are just friends mm -hmm. why do you even need to set boundaries when you have a boyfriend what are you doing that isn't okay by your boyfriend now that you have a boyfriend mm -hmm. like this is what i'm saying like what what do, what do you think right you give me your, your true opinion because like I, I feel like like okay what boundaries do you actually think you need to you need to set for example if you had a guy friend like say i know a lot of like platonic friends they'll like they'll be very touchy with each other maybe not touching that guys, sense, but they're <laughs> guys girls and guys can totally be friends platonically they can also have six boyfriends on the side this is really good uh no they can be really touchy you're not just friends you and your girlfriends aren't like hitting each other are you not really no. yeah Guys and girls cannot be friends, platonically, okay? I think that friendship is based on relatability and helpfulness to one another. So, how helpful mm -hmm. can I, for example, as a girl, be to you, and how relatable am I to you? Well, that gauges how good of a friend I can become to you, potentially. As a guy, not only would I be less helpful, because I'm of the opposite sex to a girl. Unless, obviously, <laughs> you know, and then I'd be very helpful. Not only that, but I would also be far less relatable because I don't live a similar life to a girl. So I don't think guys and girls can be friends.
if you guys are friends, like, it's not, like, you, when you see these girls, for example, with their guy friends, and they're, like, kind of, like, being touchy, like, kind of joking around, joking as friends, do they, they look like friends to you? No. Yeah. And this is this is what a lot of, like, she's not technically wrong. Like, that girl would never sleep with that guy because he's just a friend to her. She just likes his attention, possibly, right? Mm -hmm. She just likes the attention, whatever. This is how girls see it. Realistically, a lot of you guys would be like, oh, well, look, you know how, like, you know, they try and twist everything. Like, it's not like that. It's just how they see it, right? That's just how you see it. Yeah. But also, like, for me, like, I would never be friends with a guy. Yeah. Like, What I, do you have to, like, relate to a guy with? I don't have anything to relate to him with, and I just don't think that I need, like, that's not something that I need. Like, it's not... Why, what do you think, just about your situation as, as, as who you are in your life, so that would be like family situation, um, prior experiences, examples of love in your life, and why do you think you don't need to have a bunch of guys around you? I don't think that they provide anything that I need in my life, to my life. I don't think that having a bunch of guy friends would add more value to my life. Why? What, like, why were you opposed to a girl who does? What's the difference? What do you think the catalyst is for that difference in opinion? I think that, like, I have everything that I need with the people around me that I have right now. So it's important to have a mom and a dad that get along? Yes. Is there things, I guess you just don't want to say that, right? <laughs> I think the most important thing for honey, finding a woman who is okay with just having one guy in her life is one she needed to grow up in a healthy family a family where mom and dad loved each other two she actually needs to have a dad a lot of the time sometimes like i could be it, it's not like an end-all be-all but for the vast majority it is incredible the things you lose out on by not having a healthy mother and father figure um and also just being shown stable love being shown that you that the people who are around you are just enough and they give you enough to be satisfied. Whereas like in some families where like the parents always argue or they always, or like they kind of abuse the children, it's not shown. And so the person feels like they need to amp up their, their security on the income of energy, the income of love. And that's why they'll add several different people instead of just having one because they're worried about, Kind of having that, uh, not having enough. This wouldn't be a keys to finding great relationships or the keys to having successful relationships as a teenager if we didn't cover the common addictions that teenagers have. First one, porn. Yes. How does a girl feel when she knows her boyfriend is watches porn? Or, or how, how do you feel first? How do you feel when... You can kind of tell that a guy watches porn. Maybe a guy, if you're, for example, you were going to talk to this guy, like just objectively as like from a girl's point of view, how do you feel if you know like a guy you're talking to, for example, has or, or likes to watch porn, is like addicted to watching porn? From a girl's point of view, a guy watching porn definitely isn't something that she's like thirsting over. It's not yeah. something that's like, oh, like, what yes, a legend. Okay. Yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like. If you could tell, like, if you knew that a guy watched porn, you'd be a little, like, oh, like, that's a little, like, you know, it's not the first thing that you jump at when you meet a guy. Yeah. But then, at the same time, it's, like, when that person's single, it's kind of, like, oh, like, what you choose to do with your life is what you choose to do with your life. But I feel like you're only saying that because it's normalized nowadays. That and could it's be normal too. for people to watch porn. Yeah. Even, like, people's fathers are watching porn. Yeah. When Which is weird. Like, reality, when you look at what porn is, you're literally, like, on your toilet or on your bed, like, wasting precious hours, mm -hmm. like, coming to, like, these girls who are, like, the dirtiest whores in the whole fucking world, who are okay with showing their body to any man who wants to see them, and keep in mind, if you and this woman were to pass each other in the supermarket, this is the analogy I love using. If you and this woman were to pass each other in the supermarket, she wouldn't even notice your existence. Like, she wouldn't even see you. Mm -hmm. If you were to try and talk to her, she'd just turn around and walk away. Like, this is the reality for most men who are watching porn. 
it is incredible. Like you are giving so much energy, so much value to this one person. They wouldn't even notice you mm -hmm. if you saw them in real life. So I think watching porn is one of the most disgusting things that you can do. Because if you know your boyfriend is giving that to another woman who wouldn't even notice him, isn't that kind you of disgusting yeah, to you? you don't want that kind of gross in my opinion it's kind of gross maybe like as as girls it's just like it's not that big of a deal but to me as like like trying to protect a man's honor like that's mm -hmm. terrible well i think also from a girl's perspective when you think about the kind of people in porn obviously there's a certain image that comes to mind right and knowing that and then it's one thing that where you're sort of like oh well i don't look like that mm -hmm. and then you just it's that same thing where it's like that comparing and that self-doubt where that starts to creep in. And you're like, oh, like, well, I don't look like her. Yeah. Like, I don't, I can't do what she does. Yeah. You know, where it's like, that's much. How do you, how do you feel when you see that, like, for example, like, I don't watch it? I think it makes me feel good knowing, or not good, but like positively, mm -hmm. um, that it's not something that you do. Like, that I'm not giving my attention to just random girls? Yes. Because also I think being in a relationship, watching porn, to a certain point, that's, like, disrespecting your partner. Because it's one thing where you're giving your time to these other girls, but it's also you're looking at these other girls who aren't your partner. And you're while you're there on the toilet or in your bed, you're totally forgetting about your partner. Like, you're not mm -hmm. thinking about them at all. Yeah. And it's... I think it's just disrespectful, yeah, at the end of the day. What if if a, if a girl watches porn while she's in a relationship? What does that mean for the guy? I think it's the same thing where it's disrespectful. Do you think they do it out of addiction, or do you think they do it just because the guy is doing enough? <laughs> I think it could be a mixture of both, depending on your situation. Like, there could be times where it's just, you're just not getting what you need, and then there could be times where it's like, it's, gen it's a genuine addiction. But I do think that, like, in any sense, just watching porn in a relationship is disrespectful to your partner. This next question is going to be more helpful for the girls. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the common girl friendships in the modern day? And how hard is it to find good friends? Mm. I think finding sort of girlfriends and friendships in... Like, our world today is a little bit difficult. It's very easy to bond with other girls. At least that's from my experience. Um, I have, like, there are so many people that I've created great bonds with just based on very simple things. But I think finding a solid core group of friends who are supportive for you, like, unconditionally, who are always there for you, who are always helping you. We're actually, like, friends. Who are, like, an extended family kind of thing. Yeah, like, who are your genuine, genuine friends is very hard. Um, that could just be my experience. Like, maybe it's easier for other girls, but in my experience, finding your core group of girls is very difficult because sort of the, it's, it's the same idea where when you find your core group of friends, these are the people that you want to share your life with. Every big thing, every small thing you want to tell these friends. And there are so many people out there who are jealous of that. They're envious. They're envious and they don't want what's best for you. And I think I've had that where, you know, you want to tell your friends things, but instead of being happy for you, instead of congratulating you, they're envious of you and they rather sort of wish bad for you rather than being like happy and joyful at joyful. Your, your successes your joys yeah i think i think a lot of girl relationships are quite negative and I, i'm sure guys feel negatively when they see girl relationships but it's like a lot of the time it's like the cringiest thing and you never see like you never look at two girls and you're like damn like i respect that girl for for what she does for this girl and i respect her for doing what she does back you never see that amazing girl relationship where you see it and it makes you happy to see how loyal they are to one another mm -hmm. it's usually like in the moment like it's kind of like the same thing with the short-term mindset for the boyfriends in the moment like what can i do what can i benefit from but as soon as you start to lose you start to betray your friends and it's it's really gross and really dirty and i feel like it's not how it was a few years ago no but i will say though like when you do find your girls like your group of core friends it's 
I think that bond is really special and really meaningful. Yeah. A lot of guys struggle with finding a girl. So how can a guy be better than the rest? How can mm. he stand out from the rest? I would say the easiest way to stand out is by being a gentleman, um, giving her compliments, opening her doors, showing like kindness to her and showing genuine interest in her. Without without expecting something in return. Yes. And I think that's the important thing where you're doing these things for her because you genuinely want to, because you genuinely want to get to know her or she genuinely piques your interest, which are the same thing. Yeah. But because I think there's a lot of guys today who don't care and they sort of like, oh, well, like... Just do it yourself. Yeah. Like, very... It's a very negative mindset. And I think when you're trying to stand out or especially, like, when you're trying to make a... Not make a girl, but when you're trying to get a girlfriend and you really like this girl, it's just showing kindness and showing interest that makes her be like oh well that's really nice and makes you stand out yeah if a guy likes a girl what's the best thing he can do to secure the girl what's the best thing he can do to make her his girlfriend like, like how should a guy perceive if he likes a girl i say put in effort huh. say if you're taking her on a date put an effort into how you look put an effort into planning the date Put an effort into how you treat her. Make her feel special. You know, like don't... Don't just get some fast food and then go into a parking lot and yeah. talk about how much you like blonde girls. <laughs> yes. Like, get to know her. Um, don't just be like, oh, yeah, like I'm going to wear my two-day-old sweatpants and a t-shirt that I haven't washed in four weeks. Put on, like, a nice outfit. Pick yeah. her up. Um, you know, pick her up at her door. Like, very small, very mini school things, but I think makes such a big impact. Yeah, and, and especially now, I think it's easier than ever to make sure that a girl has a great impression of you and to increase your chance of having a girlfriend mm -hmm. because nobody does it. Like, yeah. it's, it's such an easy competition. It's such an easy game. Like, as soon as you... Like, just text a girl kindly, you know? Don't don't try and be Andrew Tate when you're texting her. Don't try to be, like, this, like, strict, like, this I don't care kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Try to be a gentleman. Be kind. Show kindness. Make her feel special because she is special. She's going on a date with you, man. She could just say, no, I don't want to go with you. You know, screw off. She's mm -hmm. trusting you to take care of her, right? So treat her specially. Make her feel incredible. Make her feel like a princess. And if nothing happens from it, if you realize that... Her personality isn't what matches yours. That's okay, you know, but give her your best. To never let a girl leave from you with a bad impression. And also adding on to that, don't expect anything in return. If you do all of these things and she doesn't reciprocate that, just that's let okay. it be. Yeah, that's okay. That, that's just who she is and you don't need her, but you should feel extremely proud for doing what you did. Mm -hmm. And you lose nothing by doing that and she not returning it. Is there any hobbies that really just get it going for a girl? <laughs> are there any hobbies that are super attractive on, that guys have? <laughs> Boxing? Boxing. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to the next question if you like. Wanna? There's not, it's just, there's not one that like comes to mind. Like when it comes to you, like I think fishing, but also for. That's attractive to you? But only when you do it. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> like when you do I think it's like because you're really passionate about it I think it's really nice but I feel like that's like that's the only time ever are you passionate about fishing no but I feel like you're passionate about fishing and then that makes me like, <laughs> but, like it makes like, you care about it enough a little bit but like I can't say fishing because I don't think that <laughs> guys go fishing how should a girl find a guy to marry Oh, and what is a great mindset to have like what's your mindset to have a successful relationship with a guy mm -hmm. I think finding when you're trying to find a guy to marry what's important is focusing on yourself 
because when you're finding a guy to marry, you're obviously looking for a very high value man. You know, there are certain standards that you want him to meet um, as your partner, as your spouse, but also probably the kid to the parent to your future kids. Mm. There are certain standards that you want them to have. And I think when you put effort into yourself, when you take all the energy that you give everyone else and you put that to yourself, how can I make myself more confident? How can I improve myself? You then in turn become a high value woman and you attract a high value man. Yeah. And that attraction is you find someone that's equal to your level and then that's And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful relationship because you're not up here and then you're trying to reason with somebody who just learned the alphabet kind of thing. Like <laughs> you're 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 on the same level, you under, you're able to understand each other. You've mm -hmm. already been through the struggles that you've gotten to to that level and you're able to you know relate on things you're able to have a much smoother relationship because you're just on the same level you're on the same wavelength and also you're both are able at that point because you're both have gone through that phase of focusing on yourself you then can bring that into the relationship somebody else as well a successful mindset in a relationship i would say is trust trust in your partner knowing that they wouldn't do anything to hurt you trusting your partner, knowing that they always have the best intentions for you and they always want what's best for you. And this is important when you're building a relationship, when you're building a life, because that trust plays into every little thing. That trust translates into dependency, knowing that you can depend on your partner when you need them for like the most minuscule things, like grabbing something from the grocery store, you know that they can do it for you or even big things like taking care of important documents for you, like that trust is foundation to your relationship. Yeah, and and also it even, like how she's saying in the foundation, it goes into the very little things. A lot of people, like you've seen your parents, for example, argue in the kitchen because your dad wants something, your dad wants something, your mom's using it, um, your mom doesn't want to give it to your dad just a second. He's like, oh, you're slowing me down. They get in an argument, they get in a fight, and the whole night's ruined. That is that trust because... For example, your dad thinks that your mom is like giving him the shorthand, if, if you understand what I'm saying. Whereas like with us, I've noticed even if like, for example, like I, I become a little impatient while we're cooking something or something like that. I always try and build trust. And, like, I'll apologize to you. Right? I'm like, I'm so I'm sorry. I raised my voice. Like I, I'm, I just felt like a little like this in the moment. Like I'll tell her like right away as soon as I raise my voice. And I'm sure you feel a lot better because that you feel like like you, you build a lot of trust me because, you know, like. Even though, like, for example, I make that mistake, mm -hmm. I'm always thinking about, like, how I want to be the best for you kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. Like, I then know that you didn't do it out of, like, negative intentions behind it. Exactly. Know, I didn't like, do it because, like, oh, Leslie, you know, you don't know anything, blah, blah. What are some challenges that a girl does have in a relationship with a guy, usually? Mm. I think a challenge that say a girl might have in a relationship could be a mindset issue where it's like, oh, like, why isn't he texting me back? I, like, I, don't, I don't text you back, like, ever, really, right? <laughs> like, I, I do text you back, but it's, like, for sometimes, like, seven hours, I don't text you back, right? <laughs> but... <laughs> but I think it's more so, like, knowing that I know that you're not, like, sitting on your phone. Yeah. You know, it's like, I know you're busy. I know you're working on something or I know you're at work. Whereas I think sometimes it's just that idea of like, why isn't he texting me back? Like, did I do something wrong? Is he mad at me? Like that whole mindset, I think that that's a really big challenge and a really big hurdle to get over in a relationship. And I think that leads into sort of like this anxious attachment style, which is a very, I want to say like personal thing in relationships and something that is very hard to get over. But once you do is very freeing and the easiest way to actually correct that as a boyfriend and girlfriend to correct these mindsets that are tricky regardless if it's regardless if it's a mindset challenge for a girl for a guy you always bring it up to your partner and when you bring it up to your partner i don't mean arguing with them i don't mean telling them that they're doing something wrong what i mean by bringing it up is you just tell them how you're feeling you tell them what your thought is you don't attribute that to their action you don't say oh, well, you've done this and this is why I'm thinking this and you're the worst ever. It's simply just like bringing it up to them. And as soon as you put it out in the open, not only does it build an incredible amount of trust and an incredible amount of attraction for your partner because they see that you trust them, 
it also builds this incredible security between you two when you guys have that sort of communication. How can a guy make a great impression for a girl? From a girl's perspective, I think what makes a great impression is just standing out, doing things, say, that guys your age typically wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. I would say that for us, or at least, like, for me, in my opinion, that would be, say, like, opening doors, right? Whether that's, like, a restaurant door, your car door, um, just very minuscule, very little things like that. I think they always leave a good impression um, on a girl, especially they make you feel good, they make you feel special, and they make you stand out. Good impressions aside, how do guys typically leave a bad impression? I think leaving a bad impression is very easy, I want to say. Um, like, if you're not ready for a date, for example. Like, if you're not dressed nicely, or if you're wearing, like... I mean, it depends what you guys go do, say, on a date, but if you're dressed, like, very, very casually, or if, say, like you don't look presentable, you know, or if you don't say you don't act very gentlemanly on a date, you don't pull out her chair, you don't open a door, you sort of leave everything to her. And it, that's just sort of like going out with a friend. Like, you know, there's like, yeah, no difference between like just hanging out with somebody versus like actually going on a date. Yeah, exactly. How should a guy find a girlfriend in our modern day and age? I think to find a girlfriend in our modern day and age, is I would say very similar to how you would find a boyfriend, you know, focusing on yourself. Um, being patient, eventually the person patient. comes by. Yes, being patient, looking and knowing what values you look for in a girl and making sure that you see those values in yourself as well. And then it just comes down to your patience. Yeah. Which I'm sure you can also answer. Yeah, it, come, it comes down to your patience to just... Be patient enough to have the right person come by and to have enough strength to let the wrong people pass by you. How can girls and guys stop having toxic relationships? Mm. I feel like this is a question that needs to be covered because most of the relationships that people our age are having are very, very toxic. Very true. So what do you think? I think to stop having toxic relationships, it's a lot of self-confidence because i think when you really break down arguments that happen in toxic relationships it comes like from other guys other yes other guys not enough attention mm -hmm. it comes from a place of like self-doubt yeah like you don't have enough mm -hmm. and and you need to argue about it so then the mm -hmm. person feels like they have to give you more yeah and so when you have that self-confidence knowing that everything your partner does isn't against you it helps you to be like it just you stop nitpicking you stop nitpicking things and you're able to kind of go with the water go with the flow yes. and not be so affected by every single little thing the person does what can a guy do specifically to make a girl less worried or make a girl more confident mm -hmm. so that she doesn't have to worry about other girls or not having enough attention I would say reassurance is the key when it comes to a guy sort of like helping out his girlfriend or helping out girls. And it's just be like, hey, like, I really like you. Or like, it could be like the smallest thing, like even compliments help. Or say like, if you guys haven't been talking a lot throughout the day, just being like, hey, like I've been thinking about you. Like very minuscule things like that. But that reassurance helps a girl to be like, okay, like, no, this like is my we're person, safe. we're safe. Yeah, like to be very confident in yourself. Maybe not confident in yourself, but it helps her to build that confidence. Yeah, and is that one of the most attractive traits in a guy? I would say so. Yeah? Yes. Like that, like reassurance. Being, being able to reassure a girl. Yes. Without being like, oh, I'm too tough to reassure a girl. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's one of the bigger things that have changed the course of like my experience in relationships because when i've like reassured you for example like you feel way like our relationship is way more smoother because you just feel happy with me you know what i mean like you're not worried about things yeah. you're very calm you're very relaxed very peaceful very true how can a guy my age be the top one percent of all guys and to have the best possible girlfriend i think one thing that a guy your age can do to stand out is focusing on your goals 
because I think a lot of 18 year olds when you look around they're sort of they're in university so they're not like they're not focused on their goals on their own personal goals on their own personal goals they're like partying they're doing this they're doing that but I think when you focus on your goals when you have a path that you want your life to go I think that makes you stand out way more and that in turn also helps you to find a girlfriend yeah and is there any like common reasons why girls just leave guys like why why do girls leave guys so often there's no reasons that come to my mind um but if i had to say i think that girls leave guys often just because like they're bored Mm -hmm. i want to say they're either i mean obviously it's not the right relationship for them but they're probably just they either got what they wanted out of the relationship which is usually what attention i want to say attention having sort of that person fill their void yeah um but once they've had that they're not they're no longer feeling fulfilled by the relationship and i think that's that would be one of the common reasons yeah it's it's usually in those relationships where both partners aren't equally yoked to trying to follow god Mm -hmm. um trying to drink the water of god instead of thirsting for the water of the world Mm -hmm. and fortunately that's what happens how can a guy detect a girl like that what do you think are like some key like Mm. traits because i think that's one of the most valuable things that we could cover what are some traits in girls that you know for a fact are girls who are just trying to have fun Mm. girls who are just living the fast life i feel like just this very like nonchalant when it comes to relationships how so you know like they don't really like they don't really care in a sense of how you act because at the end of the day they know that it won't affect them in the long run yeah they're not yeah. emotionally attached to you they don't really yeah care. they're just very like okay yeah well like that's what you did you know like very like there's no like like it is what it is kind of a yeah because a girl who really loves you it is never what no. it is yeah no yeah. and usually why do why do girls and guys argue so much why do they start fights mm-hmm. uh, a lot of times why do girls start fights with guys mm-hmm. with their boyfriends i think the fights at the end of the day trace back to this insecurity mm-hmm. um from either party whoever is starting the fights i think it always starts over something so minuscule yeah. but that action however small there's some significance behind it that triggers a partner to be like yeah. okay but i don't understand why you did this and that then turns into a fight and usually why do why do girls and guys argue so much why do they start fights mm-hmm. uh, a lot of times why do girls start fights with guys mm-hmm. with their boyfriends I think the fights, at the end of the day, trace back to this insecurity. Mm-hmm. Um, from either party, whoever is starting the fights, I think it always starts over something so minuscule. Yeah. But that action, however small, there's some significance behind it that triggers a partner to be like, yeah. okay, but I don't understand why you did this. And that then turns into a fight. Um Like, for example, like, say, for example, if a partner asks the other one to go to the store and grab something and they grab the wrong thing or they forgot, they might pick a fight over that. But it's less about, oh, you didn't buy this. Rather, like, I feel undervalued that you forgot. That you didn't listen to me. Yes, that you didn't listen to me, that this wasn't something that you took into account. So it's about insecurity, but it's also those, like, underlying underlying values or traits that are underappreciated yeah i'd say exactly yeah is there anything else that you think would be valuable to the girls our age the guys our age any quick advice that you think could be really really helpful i would say it's i feel like this is really hard advice to hear but wait for the time when the right person comes along because that like when you meet the right person it's so valuable um and everything that comes before that person is so hard but i would say that at least like in my perspective i think at the end of the day it's all worth it yeah even even if you're not 
like I think what you're trying to say before it's hard is like with without having somebody you see all your friends you know they're mm-hmm. in relationships and whatever yeah it's very difficult like it's very difficult not to follow the crowd but mm-hmm. you unless the, unless the right person has come by then yeah you gotta do what's right for you yeah you gotta you gotta really take care of yourself watch after yourself and not give yourself out to anybody because mm-hmm. in in your partner's eyes that devalues you a lot mm-hmm. no matter if it's the right person or the wrong person if that person knows that you've slept with 15 other guys before him he's not going to feel very special whereas if he knows that you he you're the he, that he's the only guy you've ever slept with and you've given that honor to him it's completely different world and he can even trust you more because he knows that you're not the kind of girl who walks around and gives it to everybody I hope that's helpful i think the one last little bit of advice i have is just keep trying mm-hmm. always keep trying if if you get pushed down, if you fall down, I know you've heard this advice, but get back up, keep trying. No matter how many times you fail, it is you always lose way more by quitting than you do by trying again and failing. And eventually the right person is going to come by in your life and they're going to change your life forever. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks for being with us for however long this video was. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks for watching. See you again very, very soon.